Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And um, yeah, today we are here because we want to talk about uh, some very interesting things that I have talked about before on this channel. What an introduction! Uh, <laughs> so uh, today we wanted to, we want to discuss or debate a uh, a topic that I brought up in the past, um, which is a topic related to uh, Muhammad's uh, prophecies about the coming of the hour, and we will get into that in a in a minute. Uh, but first off, I want to say. Uh, thank you to uh, for joining and welcome to uh, two gentlemen, both of whom nobody has ever seen on here, uh, David Wood and the Farouz. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Hello. Uh, do you want to quickly introduce yourself for those who are not aware? I mean, I, I, I basically, um, I called you an... Islamic scholar, since you call yourself uh, Sheikh Farouz, and also um, somebody who was coming here to challenge and confront us about our challenge. But what is your background? Okay. What, do you, what do you do? Um, so, you know, oh, for, I wouldn't take the um, term scholar, but I appreciate the uh, compliment. Uh, so the Farouz is a pseudonym I use. I, you know, I have a kind of a, a part-time YouTube channel. Like I post every once in a while. Um, so I guess a little bit about my background, yes, what I do. So, um, I guess I'll go to my, both my secular and religious background, um, my secular background, I have a bachelor's in history, a master's in physics, and then multiple advanced degrees in uh, educational leadership. Uh, Islamically, I went through the, uh, traditionally jazz system in the late nineties, uh, early two thousands. And I had my concentration was on um, Islamic jurisprudential uh, methodology. So that focuses on like what um, sources are laws derived from, uh, what are the methodologies that derive these sources. Um, the, you look at the different legal conclusions and comparative laws, um, the differences between the 10 modes and 20 transmissions of the Quran and their legal um, applications. Uh, the probabilities of hadith reliability and their applicability, um, historical trends and disagreements, exegetical methods, and just juristic conclusions and our reasonings. And 30 seconds, the reason I got in that, into that topic um, was my experience when I converted to Islam. When I converted to Islam, there were a lot of mosques around me, and each mosque had a different interpretation of Islam, and each one felt that theirs was right. So I wanted to know where these differences came from, and I wanted to understand, okay, why do you think this? Where did it come from? What is the history behind it? Um, so this way I could better understand um, people. Wow, well, that's that's a good summary. So um, you have been engaged in uh, defending Islam or preaching about Islam for a while on YouTube, uh, right? Did, uh, also outside of that, did, do, do you have any, um, do you have experience in generally trying to, you know, prove Islam true or disprove detractors? Um, I would say a little bit of, um, part of me wants to say neither. So what I, um, so like, for example, it, uh, I, I listen to, um, an argument like a back and forth one time that you, David, and Sajid Lipum um, had. And I critiqued it. So when I dis I didn't say, you know, this person's right, this person's wrong, 100%. Like, so if I disagreed with you, I stated, this is the point I disagree with you on why. If I disagree with Sajid, I say, this is the point I disagreed on Sajid with and why. If I disagree with David, this is the point I disagree with David on and why. I try to avoid, um, I try to avoid like, uh, you know, so I'm more into like just looking at the facts. And there are certain topics that I, um, you know, try to like avoid. And then there are certain I embrace. It's so, like, for example, like when topics I try to avoid, like when you, I saw a debate between you and other uh, Muslims on, um, Abraham, for example, I don't get involved like Abraham in the, in the Kaaba. I don't get involved with stuff like that. And here's my reasoning. Um, 
Abraham is an ahistorical figure. And before people out there, you know, throw me out of religion, whatever religion it may be, by ahistorical figure, I'm not saying that he never existed. What I'm saying is, is there is no source evidence of his existence outside of religious texts, right? So Abraham exists in the Christian Bible. He exists in the Muslim Quran. He exists in the Muslim Hadith. He exists in Talmud, apocryphal scriptures, but all the references to him are in scripture. So I don't like to get involved in those type of arguments. But if it's if it's something fact based, word based, um, et cetera, I, I'll get involved in things more like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that, that clears it. Um, uh, the, my other guest here, the Dizzle, do you also want to briefly introduce yourself for those who are not aware uh, who in the world you are? Um, now nah, people know who I am. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> David Wood, uh, grew up as an atheist, eventually became a Christian, got interested in Islam, uh, mainly because I had a couple, uh, I had a couple Muslim friends who were trying to share Islam with me. So ended up studying Islam a bit, um, just because my friends were Muslims and uh, eventually decided to get into this uh, a bit more for, for multiple reasons. But uh, among them are the fact that some of my uh, friends are ex-Muslims and now they're under a death sentence. And I've always felt like I'd be kind of a, uh, I'd be kind of a terrible friend if I just didn't say anything about the, the ideology that calls for their, beheading um you're in this category ap because because we're friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, all right that's that's more than enough thank you uh as for who i am i'm some guy who makes youtube videos all right so uh we want to today talk about a a topic that i have addressed uh, quite a bit in the past um with a certain video that i made uh in dedication to this topic called muhammad's failed prophecies and i brought up a a problem in um in the, in Islamic tradition, that uh, that that Muhammad prophesied that the end would come very soon. I specifically brought up um, two narrations according to which he said that the end would come within one hundred years, and another prophecy according to which he said that the end or the the hour when he was asked when the hour would come, he said the hour would uh, come before this boy in his presence grows very old. So um, the implication here, or the, the, the idea here is that Muhammad basically um, told his believers, his followers, that the hour would come within their lifetime or quite soon, at least within the next hundred years. So it was rather an apocalyptic um, religion um, intending to prepare for an imminent end of the world, but that end of the world never happened. And therefore, I concluded that Islam is false. We will, uh, of course, get into the details of what this idea is based on, the specific narrations, the specific traditions, the specific uh, quotations and all their details. But this is uh, pretty much the summary uh, of the topic. And I said before that... Um, I have not seen any Muslim scholar or apologist uh, successfully debunk this idea and prove to us that Muhammad was not indeed uh, wrong, that Muhammad was not a false prophet. Uh, Farouz said that he can deal with this topic and that he, that he can prove us wrong. And he can show that Muhammad did not make a false prophecy, that this is simply our misunderstanding. And I think... I think he also said in his in his video that I saw that um, if he is proven wrong and if we indeed prove that Muhammad made a false prophecy, he would actually leave Islam or something like that. If I don't remember uh, it wrong, is this David? Is this pretty much it? Is there anything you want to add? Um, no. So people. So uh, yeah, we just wanted people to have the idea of what uh, Sheikh Farouz is responding to. So there are hadiths as you pointed out, where Muhammad 
Sounds like Muhammad is saying the world is going to end. The end, the final hour is going to come. Uh, there's there's a, there's the one within 100 years, and then there's the ones where he's pointing to a, a young boy and saying, hey, you know, uh, if this kid lives, he doesn't die from sickness or something, then uh, the end would come. And so um, Sheikh Farouz said that he could give a presentation uh, responding to this. And so... Uh, guys, we, 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 we told him we'd give him un, uninterrupted presentation time. So don't expect us to like be interrupting him and, and questioning everything he says. We're just going to, we're going to, we're going to let him lay out his case because sometimes on an issue like this, it, you, you need to lay out your case. You need to lay out your understanding of how you're interpreting things. And so, uh, we're going to give him, we're going to give him time, time to do that. No problem there. Yeah, no, we will definitely listen to the, the, the presentation, uh, listen to the argument and then, uh, only afterwards we will begin engaging with it and responding to it, looking at the evidence. And yeah, all right. Oh. Is is are we ready then? I think, I think we're set. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, I can put it here on the screen so you can start okay. the presentation. Okay. Um, yes. So right. the claim uh, that I'm evaluating, um, the statement was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, predicted that the day of judgment would occur within 100 years of 632 of the Common Era, 732 CE. So the premise, the world did not end. Uh, I worded the conclusion a little differently than um, our host, uh, that Muhammad inaccurately predicted the date the world would end. Um, so to test the claim, the hypothesis is the Prophet Muhammad predict, peace be upon him, predicted the world would end within 100 years of his death. So I felt if that claim was true, that there are testable predictions, things we should accept to see, that all the variants of the Hadith would support that meaning. Um, they wouldn't be conflicting. Uh, there would be no conflicting text from the Quran. There would be no conflicting text from a more authoritative hadith. No other prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, go past the 100-year mark. And the hadith that have no possible meaning within the rules of the language at the time it was spoken. Um, so my approach is I'm going to discuss multiple versions of the hadith next to other hadith and Quranic ayat in the same topic. I'm going to apply uh, jurisprudential um, method methodological principles, um, and I'm going to discuss a little bit um, if there's anything that any prophecy that came true after 732 of the Common Era. Then I will analyze how Imam Muslim understand the Hadith. Um, so the Hadith versions. So there are multiple versions of this hadith. Um, Aisha reported some men among the Bedouins came to the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And they said, when is the hour? The prophet looked to the youngest of them, said, if this boy lives, he will not reach old age before your hour is established. Hisham said, by your hour, the prophet meant their death. So we see one version where it's saying your hour. Then I'm going to skip the middle one. Um, and then Anas reported that a person asked the law's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as to when the last hour would come, uh, he had in his presence a young boy of the Ansar who called Muhammad, Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, if this young boy lives, he may not grow very old till the last hour. We see the last hour coming to you. So we see two different versions of the hadith worded two different ways. Um, now, the hundred-year hadith, um, Abdullah ibn Omar, who said, um, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, led us in praying Isha towards the end of his life. When he had said the salam, he stood up and said, do you see the night, this night of yours, 100 years from now, there will not be anyone left of those who are on the face of the earth. Um, now, and now we, who is uh, considered the greatest commentary on Sahih Muslim, stated uh, what is meant is that everyone on the face of the earth on that night would not live for more than 100 years after that night, whether he was young on that occasion or not. It does not mean that anyone who was born after that night would not live for 100 years and Allah knows best. Um, now, there's another hadith where Abu Huraira mentioned that Muhammad وسلم, said, Allah will raise for this community at the end of every 100 years, the one who will renovate the religion for it. Um, and then we have another hadith, it's called the Hadith of Gabriel, which um, is one of the most famous hadith, and it's supposed to have happened at the very end of um, Muhammad's career as a prophet. Uh, so he was asked about when the hour is, and his response was one who is asked, 
knows no more than the one um, who is requiring it. And he was asked of some of its signs and, you know, he gives some of the signs, like you'll see barefoot, destitute, goat herders vying with another in the construction of magnificent building and so more. Um, now, even if, let's just say there were not two conflicting versions, one that says your hour and one that says the hour. Um, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani is um, his, the nickname, the commander of the faithful in Hadith. Uh, he's considered the greatest Hadith commentator to ever lived. And he actually wrote on um, the Prophet Muhammad, um, he's been when I'm referring to the hour, in various Hadith throughout. Um, not just that Hadith, but various Hadith throughout all the collections. And he found three different ways that the Prophet Muhammad used the term the hour. So one was the hour, meaning the day of judgment, which is the greater hour. The other time, I'll, I'll go to the bottom and then go back to the middle. Um, when the Prophet Sallallahu said the hour, he's using it in reference to the lesser hour, which means when any of us die. And then there was a third meaning that appears in various Hadith collections, which um, Ibn Hajr has la labeled the middle hour. It's the death of a community. So if we said, you know, that everyone in um, New York, you know, will be dead by this time, like everyone alive in New York now will be dead by this time, right? That's the middle hour because it's a group of people. Now, what does the Quran say? So in chapter 7, verse 187, um, it says, they ask you, O Muhammad, about the hour. When is its arrival? And he said, its knowledge is only with my Lord, and none will reveal its time um, except him. So, you know, I've put a couple different um, hadith. I'm sorry, a couple different verses of the Quran here. And, uh, you know, that are stating that no one knows when the hour day of judgment will be. Now, I wanted to get into jurisprudence. Um, now, how jur jurists deal with conflict of evidence is if you say if one says um, two different texts on a similar topic, the jurists will actually gather the different verses, the different hadith, the different narrations and explanations of the first three generations and weigh them next to each other. Um, and the each usul, which is methodology, and medhav, which is school of law, there are four schools of law left in Sunni Islam. There were way more in the past, but they died out. So there are four still remaining. And each of those four has a different methodology um, for um, resolving, but there are certain things that they'll have in common as well. Um, and no, no text should be an understood in isolation. When I say that, I'm not just talking about the Quran. That applies to the Bible as well. That applies to the United States Constitution. That applies if you're reading a uh, historical text. It applies if you're reading other Islamic texts. Um, so when weighing against each other, there's about six different, I mean, there could be more, but I'm just speaking of six, right? Contextualization is one of them. Looking to see if there's like uh, other historical circumstances. Um, harmonization. Um, so it's a way that a way that both meanings could be um, accurate. So I'll, I'll give a you know secular example. If you said I was at my friend's house eating dinner today, and if you said that I was you know at a car dealership today, right? Some people could say, oh, that's a contradiction. You couldn't be at the car dealership, and you couldn't be. Whereas harmonization, wait, like, maybe I went to the car dealership first in the morning, and I went to the friend's house in the afternoon. Um, abrogation, you know, is the idea that a later verse cancels out an earlier verse. Now, choice, this is basically very, um, choice um, ha has happened when, um, it's not totally relevant to this topic, but it, I mean, to that hadith, but it is relevant to Islam. So if there are so, uh, one hadith that says, A breaks your ablution, and another hadith that says, A does not break ablution. Um, the jurist Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he gave the choice, right? No evidence, they're equal evidences, so to, you know, follow your choice. Now, preference, um, other of the imams, uh, 
Now, Imam Shafi'i looked at certain things like that, and he preferred one. Abu Hanifa preferred another. And then um, there is another is rejection that some people said they've just rejected them both. But rejection is not necessarily the best term because it's really just a different form of abrogation. But it's if a text has more transmitters than the other, it's considered stronger. Um, if a text goes against the, ma the majority or the consensus, there's, you know, I, I give a whole list. I'm not going to go into them all, but, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, people who are watching can just read or rewind if they really want to know. Um, so resolving the conflict using the classical methods, conciliation method. Um, so if Quran 7, 187 and 31, 34 state that the prophet Muhammad some does not know when the hour will occur and the hadith of Gabriel states that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu does not know when the hour will occur. The hadith of Abu Dawood states that a hundred years uh, a renewal will come. And, you know, the other hadith have to harmonize with these hadith. So the hundred year hadith must refer to those who were alive at the time. Um, and then uh, the hadith that says the hour, the one that says the hour and your hour better matches the meaning of the one that says your hour. Um, now, if I were to use the preference and rejection abrogation method, the Quran text is mass transmitted. Um, the hadith of Gabriel is in the category of famous, well-known. Um, the other hadith is considered sahih, but it's not considered well uh, famous and well-known, the other. So mass transmitted and well-known are higher standards of evidence than a singular transmission in all the Islamic schools except for one movement. Um, one movement does not says that they're equal to the Quran, but the the rest of the Muslims throughout the history of Islam outside of that movement, you know, don't agree. Um, so therefore, the meanings from the mass transmitted and well-known text takes preference. Um, I just wanted to go a little Isnad criticism and Matin criticism. Um, Isnad is the chain and the Matin is the text. So when we say hadith is authentic or sahih, and I don't totally like the word authentic, but it's the most common one used. Um, usually we're only referring to the chain. So like if Imam Muslim said it's sahih, it, it means that the chain, every linking, means that he graded. For first, uh, ex excuse me, we are um, over very much. We are very much over ten minutes. Oh, to okay. do you want to conclude it quickly? Uh sure. Um, I'm just gonna leave this open, but these are the uh, principles of Matin criticism. And uh, I felt that if the hypothesis were accurate, we would see that um, did not mean the burden of proof. Like, but I, I gave a thought experiment if it did and another layer, but I'm, I'm gonna skip that. Um, so the conclusion is basically all the variants of the Hadith do not support the meaning. There are conflicting texts from the Quran. There are conflicting texts from more authoritative hadith. There are other prophecies of Muhammad that go past the hundred year mark. And, uh, you know, there are other possible meanings within the rules of the language at the time that it was spoken. And I guess that's uh, it. Um, you can uh, undo it now if you'd like. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. Although we we might want to bring that back up, uh, no, not 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 necessarily the second, but I might have a I might have a point or two to make based on uh, one of the earlier slides. Okay, we can always get back to it whenever you need it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, but I made I made quite a few notes here, and I have also prepared a few things in advance uh, mm -hmm. before we went into into the before we uh, started the stream i'm sure david also has a lot of uh things to say i only uh, have a couple i only have a couple thoughts on it okay uh, so um here here is the issue i just have um some problems one major problem uh, with the presentation and with your objections now so you uh, you have brought up several points including one that you uh, emphasized quite a bit which is that um even if we were to assume that uh, that Muhammad only said the world would end within a hundred years, and there was nothing conflicting, um, no other conflicting narration, or if Muhammad said uh, the hour will come before this boy grows very old, and there was no other conflicting narration, um, we would still have to look at 
I don't know, uh, Quran verses, for example, which say that he may not know the hour or know what nobody knows the hour, or we could still look at uh, certain narrations where he says every hundred years, Allah sends a renewer and so on. Here is the problem. In my opinion, uh, in your worldview and in the worldview, in the world of somebody who believes in Islam and who believes in the Quran, who believes in the truthfulness of Muhammad, it is simply impossible for Muhammad to contradict himself. It is impossible for Allah to contradict himself. And it is not possible uh, when making such truth statements for Allah and Muhammad to contradict each other. Therefore, if you find Muhammad making, making a statement which contradicts with another statement that he made or which contradicts with Allah or the Quran, then you take that as a clear contradiction and prove that the narration is invalid. But that is only true because you believe that Islam is true. It's only true because you believe that Muhammad was a truthful prophet. For somebody who is not a Muslim, for somebody who does not believe in the infallibility of uh, Islam and Allah and Muhammad's prophethood, um, that is not really a solid argument. I, I will never doubt the possibility and, in fact, the idea that Muhammad contradicted himself quite a few times and that he was also at points, at times, in contradiction with the Quran. I might accept that he did say, I do not know at all when the hour will come, which I don't think he said, and I think that's a worthy thing to go into, while also claiming at another point that the hour will come within 100 years. That, I think, is entirely possible. For you, it is not possible because you think he cannot contradict himself, but for me, it's possible because he's just a mere human being, and he can, throughout his prophethood, for different reasons, out of, uh, you know, f for an ulterior motive or unintentionally change his mind and contradict himself. Um, David, it looks like you wanted to say something. Huh? Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to because I was I was thinking something similar um, in the sense that you have sort of a there, there's there's an insider's perspective and an outsider's perspective. I and mean, this is true. This is true. of This is true of everything. Right. So in, in Christianity, in Christianity, if someone's criticizing Christianity, I'm thinking of it from the perspective of a Christian where I'm trying to make sense yeah. of it. Whereas the, the other person who doesn't believe in Christianity doesn't have to think about it to, in, in, in a way where he's trying to make sense of it. He can just think it's a it's a it's a mess. And so when we're talking about um, when we're talking about something like uh, Muhammad's prophecies, um, or various things Muhammad said, uh, I think AP and I are on the same page that we're not going to this expecting consistency, thinking, oh, if he said this here and that conflicts with that over here, then we either need to reconcile them or reject one of them. We could be thinking, well, he, he may have said completely different things at different times, Um because we don't we don't actually believe that he's getting this stuff from God. Whereas as a Muslim, you're not thinking that you're, you're you're not thinking it of, of it. Uh, uh, um, you're not thinking of it uh, from a a critical perspective in the sense that you're you know you're you're raising this as an objection. Uh, you know, for for obvious reasons, you're thinking of this from a Muslim perspective, where you think you, you believe that Muhammad's a prophet, and so you're trying to. You're, you're trying to reconcile those things. And so, but it, for everyone who's watching that, that distinction is important to keep in mind, whatever the perspective that's on the table is, you, you have this, this insider's perspective and this, this outsider's perspective and why it's, why it's relevant here is, um, uh, we, we may we may listen to Sheikh Farouz's responses and think, well, that doesn't convince us that this is, you know, the correct solution to this. Uh, we may still think it's a we may still think it's a problem, but from a Muslim perspective, Muslims are probably looking saying, "Hey, if, if there's a plausible, if there's any, even a plausible response to this, I'm going to accept a plausible response to this rather than just you know rejecting Islam or something like that." Uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I was I was uh, we we're we we're thinking along the same lines there, I think. But uh, yeah, pretty, yeah what, pretty much. What do you say first? So I, actually, what um, I'll just go one at a time. Actually, what both of you said, I think, is uh, consistent and accurate. Um, though one of the things that uh, David said about the outsider perspective, it actually um, may um, think of a presentation I did um, as well as um, a, that's like I made a slide of that for tomorrow's discussion. But um, I, I did a, um, I did a, uh, a lecture 
and it was for a majority Muslim audience, but um, some Christians were there, um, some atheists as well, um, and then some people don't know. But I, I actually, like, one of um, my general problems uh, with is I feel that sometimes, and I'm going to, I'll go from the Muslim first and then to the non-Muslims. Like, I feel that many times Muslims pick up the Bible and they have a Muslim bias, right? And I feel sometimes Christians pick, not all Christians, not all Muslims, so anyone listening, pick up the um, Quran and they have um, the bias of their previous views. And that's now, so one of the lectures I did was I actually taught Muslims the exegetical traditions within Christianity. Um, I, I taught the, um, and then how this leads to different interpretations within different Christian groups. So I taught the historical critical method. I taught the devotional method, but then I um, broke down the devotional method from the Trinitarians, from the Unitarians, from the different groups. And then was like, you know, when someone is coming from the lens of a historical critical, this is how they're, this is how they view these verses. When someone is coming from the lens of a Trinitarian, this is how they view these verses. When someone's coming from the lens of a Unitarian, this is how, because I think it's more important than of people fighting and yelling at each other and slamming over the head, at least for a better world in the future, is that people try to understand each other and they try to understand each other's points of view before discuss. I'm not I, before discussing them is not always possible, but I think um, you get the uh, bigger picture. But it's um, so. Do you agree with our point that uh, that it is hard for us to accept um, an objection like? This narrative, con this narration contradicts with uh, this narration or contradicts with this Quran verse. Therefore, we cannot accept it. Uh, do you agree that that is not a not a good objection in our um, opinion, okay. from our point of view? I'm going to say partially yes and partially no. Like I can un I can empathize and I can understand um, where you're coming from. Uh, so let's just say we were having a, a conversation about like 10 different issues, not just one, right? So if we were talking about 10 different issues, you might say, you know what, like, uh, I can grant you that this hadith seems to mean this the way you're saying it, but what about this? And then, like, so I, I, if that was like the, the discussion, like I get that I don't, um, I don't totally, and I get that um, you feel that you don't have to reconcile. Like I, I understand that as well. Um, but he, here is an issue: but, even if we, even if we accepted that that um, contradiction, um, you know, rules out the possibility that this narration, which disproves his prophethood, you know, um, even if we accepted that that. Um, that the contradiction makes this whole argument of ours invalid. I still want to, um, and we will get into that even further. I don't think we're through that. I still um, think there's one more thing to add here. You talked about how to deal with contradictions and you brought up harmonization of um, you know, combining uh, different pieces of information and then pointing out that they do not actually contradict each other. And I think we, we could very much use this example in the following way. You brought up that Muhammad said on multiple occasions that he does not know when the hour uh, will come. And you also brought up that the Quran says the knowledge of the hour is only with Allah. I, I will say, okay, that's fine. Let, let's say all of these are authentic, um, real phrases, real narrations, real verses. I don't think that it is absolutely contradictory for Muhammad to say, I do not know when the hour will come. That knowledge is only with Allah. But within 100 years, the hour will appear. Or within, or before this boy grows very old, the hour will appear. Do you, would you agree with that? So, if I but, said, for example, if I said, I don't know exactly when it will happen, but I say it will happen within a hundred years. So, so ju just to just to clarify, you're saying uh, Muhammad could say, uh, just just like a Christian, just like a Christian could say, um, 
hey, I don't I don't know when the end is going to come, but it it I think it's going to come within a within a hundred years. Yeah. Or, Something like that. that that's right? that's like, not a contradiction. Like, 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 yeah, like you're not saying it's exact. Like, here's the exact, you know, uh, March 17th, 2027. That's when it happens. You just say, I, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. Yeah, but, it, uh, it's not even an, it's, it's not even an, I think. It's not even just an mm -hmm. idea. It's, uh, you could, you could say for sure, um, I don't know when it will happen. Only Allah knows. But I know for sure that it will happen within the next hundred years. In fact, we have a hadith in which Muhammad says precisely uh, something along those lines. He says, uh, you ask me about the hour and the knowledge of it is only with Allah. But within the next hundred years, nobody will be left alive on the, on the earth. So do you accept that this is not necessarily an absolute contradiction? Um, okay, so I think there's two parts. So the first part of your argument um, that it could be harmonized the way you said Yes. The second part, the way you worded that hadith, I don't, I don't know that hadith. I'm not sure if it's uh, like if it's a combination of two, but um, you know, I can bring it up in a minute. I'll just keep going. Oh. No, that's it. That's it. Um, um, I, I'll just I'll just add something while while uh, AP is is uh, is looking something uh, looking something up. Um, wanted to add one point, which 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 uh, will favor the the Farus um, a bit it, and that's that um well let, let let me let me back up a little bit so if we're talking about Muhammad's prophecies and we open up these sources um and there are prophecies that talk about um you know they, they, they make it sound like the end is going to come that the judgment is going to come soon and there are other prophecies that sound like the judgment is going to come uh, far off in the in the future basically got several different possibilities one one possible one possibility is that muhammad didn't say any of it right all of this stuff is all of this is made up so there are people like you know uh, jay smith and robert spencer who believe that like muhammad didn't even exist um so they would believe that all of this stuff is made up then you could have the sort of uh the the the, the other extreme would be that uh muhammad said all of it and a bunch of it is is contradictory if he's saying it's going to happen within 100 years and other prophecies say it's going to happen after 100 years and multiple things are going to happen um then you'd have just multiple uh contradictory uh sources um, and then the, the sort of the sort of middle ground would be two options. One, either Muhammad said the things about he actually said the things about the end coming near and other people made up or misinterpreted or misunderstood things to make it sound like things are the end is going to come later or. Um, Muhammad actually said the things about the final hour coming way off in the future. And then people misinterpreted or misunderstood things, uh, some of what he said as if he was saying that the judgment is going to come soon. So you got, you got these four possibilities. He didn't say any of it, or he said all of it, even if it sounds like contradictions, or he said some of it and other stuff was, was made up. But the, the, the point, the only point I wanted to add to all of that is because, uh, you know, I distinguish between insider and outsider, um, even from an outsider's perspective, uh, I would say that if there's a way to harmonize it, that, 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 we kind of should accept that, right? In other words, if, if I got these two things and they sound contradictory, but you point out, you're the insider and you point out, actually, here's a way to harmonize these things to where they could, they could, they could, they could both be, be true. Or if you had a reason to dismiss, dismiss one in the favor, in the favor of another, uh, I don't think we should be absolutely glued to the idea that no, this, this has to be a, this has to be a, a contradiction. So I, I think, I think harmonization, if it, if, if harmonization works, then harmonization should, should be accepted. That, that's I, I want to address, uh, um, add two sources to um, what we have just discussed, one to support what I uh, brought up earlier and one to support what David just uh, mentioned. So this is one source which is from um, Sahih Muslim, according to which, uh, read in English, it says, I heard Allah's Messenger is saying this one month before his death, you asked me about the last hour, whereas its knowledge is with Allah, part one. I, however, take an oath and say that none upon the earth of created beings would survive at the end of 100 years. This is one of those narrations which deal with the 100-year prophecy, which I clearly take as an indication that the world will end within 100 years. But uh, within the same narration, you can also find 
um, this part where it says the knowledge is only with Allah. If we accept that this is indeed about uh, the hour, and he does indeed mean that the hour will come within 100 years, I do not think, um, just from a logical point of view, that there is any contradiction in here. He could say, you asked me about the last hour, only Allah knows that. So the specific hour, only Allah knows that. But I know it will happen within 100 years. And another thing I want to, uh, the other source that I want to quickly bring up is also um, something that David mentioned. There is another narration of this same event in uh, Tirmidhi in which it says, Ibn Umar said, people misunderstood the saying of the Messenger of Allah in what they say based on these hadiths about 100 years. Uh, and the Messenger of Allah only said, there shall not remain anyone who is upon the surface today, meaning only this generation would end. So even according to uh, Ibn Umar, according to this narrative, people misunderstood it and thought that the end would come within 100 years. It's not just us who are making this assumption. Okay. Anything you want to say? No, there's nothing I disagree with you on that. And there was something that David said that I agreed with, but I can't remember what. I was like, I was wanted to write it down and then, you know, just slip my head. Um, you know, but uh, but I think, you know, what, um, oh, I remember what I, I wanted to say is that, like, even what David said, like, we like, and this is something I think a lot of listeners um, don't um, understand is that we can agree on an issue, right? Like, so you can agree with me on an issue and not believe in Islam, right? I can agree with David on an issue and not be a Christian. I can agree with AP on an issue and not be an atheist. Um, and so when I hear a lot of times, um, so I actually appreciated um, David's comment and a lot of times I hear from listeners, um, you know, bo from both sides, the, you know, the Christian and Muslim side, different things. I mean, when, when I said I was coming on the show, um, I had, um, you know, one Muslim tell me it's not permissible to have a conversation with you. And then uh, I, had a, I had a Christian say, bring it on. We're going to tear you a new one and something. And I'm like, you know, you know we're we're coming to have a conversation we can agree to agree we yep. can agree to disagree we can walk away and say have a good night yeah and and uh, along those along those same by the way you're going to get just so you know you're going to get more of that <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get more of that like as, as 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 soon as we're done you're going to be you're going to be hearing don't 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 think i'm claiming to be a prophet here but you're <laughs> You're going to hear from a lot of other people that you should not be having any sort of uh, any sort of discussions um, with us. J just so everyone knows, I actually prefer this to the uh, to the endless hostility. But um, exact same. same. Uh, if it, but notice if you have notice what what a group is saying. Anytime one group is saying no, there cannot be any sort of action interaction with outsiders unless it's one of hostility. That's a uh, I mean, my goodness, that's that, that's a that's a cult mindset, right? Like, like you can't trust anyone outside your group, and you can't. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that with us because they can say, you know, because these guys, you know, uh, you, you know, they they criticize Muhammad all the time and the Quran and so on. You shouldn't have you shouldn't have any sort of discussion with them. But I mean, think about like wh where where does that leave us, right? It leaves everyone in like separate groups with no with no like calm, rational discussions. Everything is just like insults and abuse all the time. And I don't, I don't know, it doesn't, uh, I mean, we, we'll go that route when when that's the only when that's the only possibility of interacting with with uh, someone like people who are saying they're gonna kill uh, AP and so on as soon as they get in power. Um, but uh, it doesn't mean that's- not laughing that's, at it it's funny, it was just the-, the yeah. <laughs> So you're, you're laughing at the idea of him getting his head chopped off. That's no, all. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I okay, laugh when I hear it, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, because we, you know, like I've, I've had, not by a religious group, but you know, I was basically, I was told by, um, a political group basically that, uh, you know, about how I don't deserve to live and, you know, they need to get rid of me and this and that because I said, you know, someone, uh, had more evidence than another person on a topic. 
Yeah. And and that that's you know you know Un- unacceptable. In, in in a in a in a sane world if someone disagreed with you they'd say here let me give you let me show you where you're wrong or something like that. But uh, no it's uh no it's it's, uh, it's you got to chop your head off. Yeah. It's it's great that we have come to, that we can come together and have this uh, conversation. I I do a lot of my work in critis- criticizing Islam and opposing Islam in a very uh, provocative way, and often the provocation is deliberate because I think it um, it serves very much as a you know as a as a supporting factor to attract more attention to the to the point, and then I want to see the reactions and engage with them. The downside of it is, of course, that uh, a lot of people think I'm just looking for a fight, and uh, they hate me. They cannot take the mockery and uh, the, the humor, and we end up fighting, and I get into endless back and forths, endless fights, which turn pretty pretty dirty and uh bad and I, I don't i don't like that i don't prefer that i like the humor and i like to do things in a provoking way but i don't want to fight with people i want to come together and sit down and have a conversation after the laughter after the offense even if people believe terrible things about me i want to uh you know point that out but then come together have a nice time and talk about our disagreements, no matter how wild they are. I, I really, I really prefer this, and I really appreciate that you that you have come here to to talk to us about this. And I invite every single Muslim and Muslim apologist, even those that that fought with me in the past in the most brutal ways, to come here and just to sit together and to talk. We don't have to fight. It, it makes me. It doesn't make my life better. It doesn't make your life better. It makes nobody's life better. So I'm I'm very happy that we can agree on that and go. Oh, I was just going to point out because I know uh, 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 the Farouk doesn't have all all night. He's going to have to go at, at some point. He's got. I mean, we've all got kids and so on. But uh, if we could pull up, there, there's there. I had one main one main thought to his uh, to the. Um, to the presentation if we could go back to the slides i wanted to go back i, I have I, I have a lot of them too but <laughs> we don't have enough time but let's do this oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's why i mean i, I have individuals that, and and some some of that some of this i agree with um but uh yeah if you could go back it was towards the beginning i can and, actually go through the slides here which is interesting i didn't know i could control your slides oh, i didn't know that at all yeah. that's interesting um go all the way back towards the beginning being lazy <laughs> um hang on hang on Okay, so go, was that the beginning? Uh, this here is the beginning. Okay, so yeah. go forward. Uh, where's the one where it gives the different possibilities? Okay, yeah, here we go. As far as as far as um, predictions, this is this is and this is really my my main my main concern in all of this. Um, so if this claim is true, by the way, this is this is. Um, this is relevant to interpreting not only hadiths but all kinds of things where uh, stories might change over time because that happens that happens a lot as people are telling stories over time stories sometimes change and so on um so this claim about uh it, if muhammad actually predicted that the world would end within 100 years or within the lifetime of a, of a of a boy then we would expect uh, all the variants to support that meaning Whereas I would expect the exact opposite. So in other words, I'm thinking if that's true, if Muhammad did actually say this, I would not expect all variants of the Hadith to support that meaning. And the reason is the Hadith collections are being written down after the most straight, most straightforward uh, meaning of the hadith had already been falsified, right? In other words, so, so so imagine Muhammad comes along and he says, the end will happen within a hundred years. Within a hundred years, everyone will die. And, and this kid will see the end. This kid will be alive. If he doesn't die from something else, this kid will be alive to see the, to see the end coming. Um, if Muhammad said that, then by the time you get to a hundred years later, people are going to know, okay, this, this, this didn't happen. This, yeah. this didn't happen. And so at that point, there would be there would be a strong inclination to reinterpret and revise those hadiths. Mm-hmm. So in, so if you get to the time that Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim are being written, um, we would expect different versions that that would correct what looks like an error. Even if they're still Muslims, they don't think it's even if they think they were completely misunderstanding it. 
we would expect different versions of the story to arise that don't have what looks like um, a a prophecy that had been falsified. So I would actually expect if Muhammad did say, did say what those hadiths claim about him saying that the end would come soon, I would expect there to be different versions of the hadith that don't include the error uh, later on. Uh, I so, want to add to that. Um, I mean, we, we we brought up this source earlier where um, Ibn Omar himself says that people understood this, but it was actually referring to the end of the, the people and their generation. So um, th th there we have um, a, a source, an Islamic source, early Islamic source, actually agreeing that this is what people thought. People thought the, the end would come within 100 years, but apparently they misunderstood it. And as a result of that misunderstanding, it is entirely um, reasonable for us to accept that people may have, due to their, uh, you know, new um, perspective, their, their 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 new the new information that the world didn't indeed end, they may have changed uh, the original claims, the original prophecies. So we said a lot. So any, anything you want to? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah anything um, you want to? But there's there's nothing overall that you said like you know because we're for the we're speaking you know like hypotheticals theoreticals the one thing though um i did have a question though about if so like if that's the case um why not then instead of changing um to fit why not just try to get rid of it all together Right. So why would why would Imam Muslim bother putting this in his collection if he thought that that meant the world was going to end a hundred years? It, like if if you wanted to maintain your belief, you could kind of just leave it out altogether. So that's my question. Why? I I, th I think the the answer to that would be uh, simple. There are several answers. Uh, one of them would be um, Muslims often praise these imams for their uh, diligence and their adherence to. You know, uh, to a, to a certain standard of verification and authentication of these uh, narrations, they uh, travel around for years and collect uh, narrations which were transmitted through different narrators to them. So, um, if these imams hear these specific narrations from these people who clearly say, "Hey, we have heard uh, the Prophet Muhammad say this," then it is not it is not as simple as it may seem for them to just say, yeah, okay, this doesn't make sense. We will not include this at all because it's not just one imam. It's, it's multiple imams. It's not just one narration. It's multiple narrations. What they are left with is to say, okay, this, this hadith looks kind of, it just looks interesting, but the content, uh, you know, as it appears, doesn't make sense, but we have to record it because that's our standard. So let's record it, but, um, make of it what we, you know, what, what we can do uh, and, and somehow interpret the meaning of the text in such a way that it makes sense from our perspective. Because obviously Muhammad was a true prophet. He can't be wrong. And this this uh, source, this phrase from him is obviously authentic. Since he cannot be wrong and since this is authentic, he must mean uh, something that actually makes sense. So let us interpret it in such a way. I think that would be the way to go for them. Yeah, let, let, let me add something real quick because uh um I mean uh Sheikh Farouz is 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 correct. So so the the, the question is uh if this is if it really really looks like a, a mistake and an error, then by the time you get to you know Imam Muslim and Bukhari, why are they why don't they just why don't they just throw that out, right? Just 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 not record it. And then AP pointed out that well, maybe they're just being intellectually honest here. Uh, we've got a method. Uh, th these could be uh, hadiths that were uh, stories that were that were widely known and wanted to record them. I just wanted to add um, uh, that th there there is actually a benefit to passages like this. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there are people who don't believe that Muhammad existed. Um, there there are critics who don't believe Muhammad existed, so they believe all of this stuff is made up. Um, I. When I think why I disagree with them, it's actually passages like this. So not even thinking, hey, I'm I'm using this to show that Muhammad is a false prophet. I'm always thinking of why would someone invent this? If you're saying this was invented, why would someone invent this? Like if you were saying Muhammad performed a miracle, okay, I can at least think of reasons to invent 
stories about Muhammad performing miracles. Um, if you're saying that people invented all of Muhammad's prophecies because he never existed or he didn't say any of this stuff, I'm looking back at this going, well, why would they invent that? Why would they invent this uh, story that sounds like something that's that's completely false? And moreover, why would they invent it after it's already been falsified? So if, if, if people during the time or shortly before the time of Bukhari and Muslim are inventing stories about Muhammad, because they're coming up with a new religion or something like that. Why would you, why would you invent this, this, this kind of thing? And I don't see a good reason. <coughs> um, I don't see. So anyway, the, 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 the long story short, when you're looking at this stuff from a, from a historical perspective, it can actually help answer certain uh, objections that, uh, that people have. But with that said, um, uh, as far as applying it as AP did to Imam Muslim, I think you could actually look at this and say, you know, uh, since Imam Muslim recorded this and when he, even though he knew, and he records multiple, multiple versions of it, mm -hmm. um, since he recorded this, even though he knew that the most straightforward interpretation of some of these, some of these passages was that Muhammad made a false prophecy. Since he recorded that, this really means that he was trying to record information um, accurately. And so for, for me, it would make me think, okay, this actually adds credibility to his work. So mm -hmm. since I can trust him over here, maybe I can actually trust him in some of these other areas where uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have trusted him before, but if he's really trying that hard to include accurate information, that means he's actually a, a being a good historian here. Yeah. Then that's what I think. That's what I, um, that's the idea that I prefer. And there you can also see the difference. Like David, for example, brought up, um, some malintent here. I brought up, uh, I said that they have good faith and this just shows, uh, who is the enemy of Islam and who has the better attitude toward Islam. Uh, but, uh, so I, I would say, um, I, I lean more toward the idea that, uh, that these, the, these early scholars who recorded these ideas, um, were actually, um, they were acting in good faith. You know, they didn't. They didn't mean to distort and deliberately, you know, with malintent create something that is false. I would say they 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 believed in it, but due to their biases, created something that is eventually inaccurate and, in my opinion, disproves Islam. But we have said a lot. I want to uh, ask uh, you, Farouz. Um, so, give, given all that we have discussed, what is what is your perspective on? This whole idea. Do you do you still think that there is a possibility that we are right and that Muhammad made a false prophecy, or do you think that it is that that idea can be thrown out the window? Um, so I actually can I come back to that because I wanted to um, address David's point. Yep, yep. So the uh, so I th actually think you made a, a very good argument for uh, the criterion of embarrassment. And I'm usually in history because I'm usually opposed to the criterion of embarrassment. Um, and I've been that way for a while. And part of my reasoning be is because I think I'll, quite often when people use the criterion of embarrassment, they're projecting their modern day belief. That can happen. On previous people. Also, I think sometimes they leave off motive. So um, Sheikh Mohammed Nasruddin Albani, he did... Um, an article, it was called Fabricated Narrations About the Black Man. And it was people who, in, there were, you know, people who were racist and they invented hadith, you know, against black people um, in order to justify the mistreatment of black people. So, um, and Sheikh Muhammad Nasr al-Din had pointed out, and, and the Muslim scholars of the past preserved that not because Muhammad said it, so that you would know what he didn't say, but just so you would know what people are saying that he didn't say. Um, and so, you know, when you look when you look back, um, you know, the cri if you do the criterion of why would they preserve that, right? You know, because that makes Muhammad look bad. Well, no, there were people who actually wanted to justify, they had motive, they wanted to justify behavior. So they had a motive to invent stuff. 
Um, you know, and you ask me about, um, you know, possibilities and probabilities. Um, you know, I am one who does not ascribe to 100% um, math, uh, mathematical certainty on anyone. I think, you know, yaqeen in the Quran, like religious certainty is different than um, mathematical certainty. Um, so I do, I do think that the explanations, you know, given by Imam Nawawi and Ibn Hajar, um, as well as Ibn Omar and Aisha, they, they, uh, they suffice to, um, you know, for this one particular issue. But, but how? <laughs> um, I'm just trying to understand because I think, um, so their explanations are basically the foundation or an extension of what you have uh, pretty much presented today, that there is no contradiction, that there is no falsehood in them due to, um, you know, different, different factors, including that the prophet would be contradicting himself, that there is, uh, that there are contradicting reports, or um, you brought up some of some, some other um, reasons, for example, that these narrations contradict with, with historical facts, which I think is, is a, would be a bad objection, you know. Um, but I, I don't think that any of these um, explanations are actually acceptable because I think they simply come from a place of bias. And in my opinion, when I sit down and look at the sources as we see them, I also want to bring up quickly uh, this, by the way, I, I looked into the different um, narrations of that specific hadith which deal with um, the when Muhammad says, the hour will be established before this boy grows very old mm -hmm. and looked into the, the study of, of narrators. And there are three variations of this hadith in which, uh, so in, in two of these uh, variations, he speaks of the hour. For one of those, we have uh, three specific narrations. For the other, we have one narration. He clearly says the hour will not be established until this boy grows very old. According to the other variation for which we have only two narrations, which allegedly originate from Aisha, he says, your hour will come upon you before this and this happens. Um, I mean, here we have, just if we just look at the credibility of narrators and the number of narrations, it is much more likely that Muhammad actually said the hour will not be established before this boy in your presence grows very old. Whereas um, a lesser number of narrations says your hour will come upon you. And I, I would think very obviously this distortion here happened because these, re these reports were recorded way after uh, these generations of people, way after that boy died. So they tried to make sense of it and uh, created a version where Muhammad actually speaks of their hour instead of the hour. Um, I think I mean, looking at the evidence in this case, looking at the evidence in the case of the 100 years after which uh, everybody would disappear and the world would end, I would, I think my clear conclusion here is that Muhammad made false prophecies. And I think um, we don't have much time, but there are lots of different uh, pieces of, of evidence which support this too. For example, Muhammad's uh, prophecies that, uh, that, 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 that Jesus would come very soon, that uh, Gog and Magog would soon invade the Arabs, that um, he thought somebody in his presence is the Dajjal, uh, that during an eclipse he thought he thought this is the coming of the hour and so on there there are lots of pieces of evidence which actually support the idea that he did uh, expect the hour to come any time now and he did make false prophecies based on that idea whether he did actually believe in such an hour whether he did actually believe in a prophethood or whether he was um you know lying to people i'm not i'm not going to make a judgment on that uh, as we speak but i simply don't see a way out of here. I don't see a way of explaining these things away and conclude that these are not false prophecies. Uh, let, let me just add a, a quick clarification because I, I w sometimes we forget that that there, there are people jumping into the the discussion who might not uh, might not be familiar be too familiar with what we're talking about. When we're all, all of us here who are having the discussion, we're, we all know what we're talking about. But uh, 
ju just a general breakdown for anyone who wasn't here at the at the beginning or if anyone is totally new to this. Uh, in the hadith, so these narrations about things Muhammad said and did, um, there are some that say uh, that Muhammad is asked about the hour, the, the, the final judgment, and he said he points to a to a young guy and says, if he doesn't, you know, if if if, if he lives long enough, or, you know, if he doesn't die of something else, then he'll be around to see the judgment. And there are other passages that uh, where Muhammad says that nothing's going to be left alive. None of the no, no people aren't going to be left alive within a hundred years from now. So if you take those as authentic, it sounds like something that was falsified that shows Muhammad is, was a was a false prophet. But there are other hadiths. There are other hadiths where um, it, 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 it sounds more like Muhammad's not saying that this kid is going to be around at the final hour. It's this kid will be around at your final hour, meaning your death or the death of the death of this community or something along those lines. And that the prophecy about 100 years mean it was the meaning of that, the actual meaning, according to this theory, is that Muhammad is simply saying, um, hey, guys, has it occurred to you that we're all going to be dead in 100 years? What, like none of us is going to be alive 100 years. And then so the, the, the idea about how those other versions arose that, that looked like they were falsified is that people misunderstood these things that Muhammad was saying. So uh, Sheikh Farouz is claiming that uh, yeah, from an Islamic perspective, you would obviously go with the ones that, that make sense. And so how did those others arise? Well, some other method. And AP's pointing out, it, it looks like Muhammad said the false, gave the false prophecies and that his followers later modified and tweaked them to, so that he, he is not exposed, he's not exposed as a false prophet. So that's the, that's the general the general gist of uh, of what's going on, and so I just wanted to clarify that. But yeah, what, what are your what are your, what are your thoughts, Bruce? We talked a lot, Bruce. Uh, oh, sorry about that. I, th I think I think you I think you should have some final words. Yeah, here. yeah, I will. Because and then like I, it's about thirteen minutes past nine, so you know I go. So I um, think that it's um, inconclusive, meaning that like so you know when you were saying like you don't feel there is any way out. Uh, I look at it the opposite. We, you can't make a hundred, like when you look at all these different versions, can any of us sitting here or anyone in the audience be 100% sure what the prophet actually said word for word? I can't because there's too many different. Yeah, no, I, I definitely can't. Yeah. I just look at the, I just look at the, the, the evidence yeah. and the possibilities yeah, so, and what so, is more so. likely. Yeah, so so j j just to, just to be you know uh, to be as, as fair as possible, um, mm -hmm. Sheikh Farouz is correct in that uh, I don't know what Muhammad actually said. I agree. So so a lot of things are um, are up in the air. What, what I would say, I would I would interpret it like this: if if you have really if you had really 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 good reasons to believe that Muhammad is a prophet, then when someone comes along and says, "Here's a false prophecy." then it should be, okay, I, I really need to investigate that because I have these good reasons to believe that Muhammad is a true prophet. Um, and therefore, if there's room for doubting these things that are attributed to him because they turned out to be false or something like that, then I'm going to give Muhammad the benefit of the doubt because um, because I have, I have these reasons to believe in him. Whereas if you don't have those reasons, if you don't think there's any good reasons, or if you think that there's good reasons to believe that he's a false prophet, then when he makes a false prophecy, you go, okay, it makes perfect sense. I would, that's what I would expect from a uh from a false prophet so uh so yes so j j j just so everyone knows we are not ruling out we are not ruling out and saying that 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 uh that sheikh Farouz's uh interpretation is uh is definitely wrong or something uh, i'm more along the lines of thinking hey i understand why someone would revise these hadiths in one direction uh i don't really understand why they would uh, revise them in another direction. In other words, if Muhammad actually said, you know, the end is going to come many centuries from now, I don't understand why people would invent them. I, I mean, although I could, I could, I could just, I could invent possible explanations if there was someone within the first century, because you have people like this today. You uh, like every generation has 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 people who are saying the end is nigh. The end is, you know, in, in two years, two years from now, the end is coming. You could have people within the first century of Islam 
who make up or modify or tweak prophecies so that it makes it sound like, ah, the end is, is 20 years from now. We're, we've already gone through 80 of these hundred years. So everyone, everyone get ready. So it, it's possible that people can invent stuff. And because the Hadiths are, you know, pretty late, you're talking about two centuries after the time of Muhammad, there is, there is a, um, there is time for inventing things. And, and, and uh, Sheikh Farouz made, made, made an important point when he's talking about, you know, hindsight, when we're applying the, the principle of embarrassment, applying what's embarrassing to us, to previous generations when it might not have been embarrassing to them. There's also the possibility of, of people having reasons for doing things that, that we're not aware of. Like we we, we, we might not even know a, a person's motives for, for inventing something. So um, at the end of the day, yes, what e everything Sheikh Farouz is saying is uh, these are all possible interpretations of the evidence. I think what AP and I are sitting here thinking is it doesn't look like that. It doesn't yeah, it's it's really, so really look like I would say from my point of view, I would agree. Um, I have absolutely no idea what Muhammad actually said, of what Muhammad actually spoke, of uh, which of these narrations is actually a completely accurate representation of what he said. But what I do is I simply, um, you know, weigh the evidence. I look at it and it looks to me as mo the, the most likely, the best explanation that he did indeed say these things, supported by many pieces of evidence, and that he therefore made false prophecies. I want to add also that um, even in Hadith studies, in Islamic studies, uh, and I'm, I'm sure uh, Shay Farouz could uh, tell me if I'm wrong here, but even there the idea is not that, that we know what Muhammad precisely said. The idea is um, we know what people say Muhammad said. Therefore, um, the reports always include, uh, according to so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so, the prophet said this and this. So the claim is never Muhammad said this. The claim is, according to so-and-so, Muhammad said this. So even even the, 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 the Islamic scholars in the field for 1,400 years um, don't, don't presume to know precisely what he said. They simply go for... Uh, the, the narrations and uh, for the, for the most likely explanation of what he said, which is why they evaluate these different sources. I simply do the same here, and I conclude that he made false prophecies, and I would have to be convinced otherwise. But what I'm more curious about is, uh, Farouz, what would what would convince you to accept? that and, I, and and i'm not here to say i want you to accept that he was wrong right now mm. <laughs> i'm just curious what would uh you know convince you that there is actually something wrong here or is it possible for you to come to such a conclusion what is your takeaway from all of this i, I think um anything's possible as far as your last question i don't know i'd have to think about it but it's not something I could think about in 30 seconds and give you an answer. And I think if you can tell by our interactions, I mean, I'm not the type who comes up with an answer in five, 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, unless it's something I already know. I'm more likely to say I don't know. I, I kind of, you know, the way I look at our discussion is we're looking at the same thing. And you lean more likely that, that proposition A is more likely than proposition B but you're not like amazingly strong in that camp. I argue more that prop, I think proposition B using, you know, the classical methodologies is more likely. Um, and about your question about the, um, the Hadith. So like I said, there is one, you know, movement that, you know, did say that did say that anything you know, we could be 100% sure, but they, for, throughout the history of Islam, they were, they were a minority. I do think it, they became, the movement spread more in the last hundred years than probably in most of Islamic history. Uh, but the best actually um, term I heard actually to describe um, hadith is probabilistically true with different levels of probability. So, you know, that the more, the more narrators, the more likely um, the, pro the Prophet Muhammad said that or said something like that, um, you know, and, and more narrators by itself is not, you know, but, you know, with other factors. But I, um, you know, I enjoyed our conversation. Um, you know, unfortunately, it has to end for tonight, but I know we'll be, you know, picking up again tomorrow night, different topic. 
Um, and, uh, you know, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I really uh, enjoyed this. I think it was incredibly uh, valuable. And to add to that, tomorrow we will actually be together again on David Wood's channel. I will um, link to that. So we will have another discussion about the topic of um, whether the Quran says the previous scriptures have been corrupted or not, right? That's the topic. Yeah, it's uh, specific. Um, I, th I think it's specific. I think the the response was whether the whether the Quran says the gospel's been corrupted, but if if Sheikh Farouz well, wants to, yeah. So no, um, so what it, it was kind of uh, the Muslim view on the previous scriptures throughout history, That's because there's not because there's not one view, right? It's mm -hmm. not just like you know, um, yeah, there's That's more fine. than one view, and then some were more popular than others, so yeah. it's a little more in depth than a, it's than that simple. Like yeah, that. yeah. So, so, uh, so, yeah. I have uh, people are familiar with my view of what the Quran says about the previous scriptures, and then Sheikh Farouz is going to give uh, uh, his perspective, which is going to include different perspectives um, yes. on on the Christian scriptures. So, we'll, we'll we'll be discussing that tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. I, I would love to uh, have more of these conversations, and thank you so much, Farouz. Yeah, um, and Sheikh Farouz has to go. Uh, AP, if you wanted to hang out a couple minutes and like do yeah, I, I go will, through I will, the go through yeah. the super chats. I, I can hang around for a few. I will. I will. I will now brag about how we have destroyed the Muslim. He's <laughs> 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 finished. You're finished. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah. I will go talk, on. Yeah, talk to you tomorrow. See you. Uh, that was very, very wholesome. And that was refreshing. I feel like yeah. normally, normally have a discussion with uh, some of the Dawa guys, and like I'm gonna go like take a bath afterwards because because <laughs> 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 of because the uh, raining down of endless insults and stuff. But uh, <laughs> no, first seems like this, a nice this guy. Was, yeah. This was amazing. I mean, he actually um, he actually took a lot of things that we have said seriously, took them to heart, made. Uh, consider different things like the first objection about the the 100 year prophecy he actually um took our objections to it and the evidence seriously and seems like he is processing it and he will based on this uh information make up his mind and come to different conclusions maybe he will still conclude that we are totally wrong yeah. but it's good to see that something is actually happening instead of the constant uh no you are wrong and i will prove it and i'll humiliate yeah yeah and and, and note notice notice the impact that has because then you know we're we're a bit more inclined to give the benefit of the doubt where we can mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to say okay yes that that is a, that is a possible interpretation whereas if you know if this were like a, a an angry hostile debate and uh, you guys are stupid for for thinking that Muhammad made a mistake. Then we would be more inclined to say no, you, no, he's completely wrong and it's indisputable. Right. Um, so yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's a nice yeah. change of nice change so, of pace. Ahmed was like that. I I had a, I had a discussion with uh, Ahmed at, at Finding Truth on my channel, and that that was a, that was a similarly uh, friendly discussion. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is your takeaway, uh, David? Do you know? Are you now more inclined toward believing that Muhammad was actually correct about his prophecies? Are you more inclined toward thinking that I was wrong, that you are wrong about these prophecies, and that, and that Islam might be the truth? Uh, no, I actually, uh, I mean, my, my position would still be the same, which I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's that, you know, Farouz is correct and that we cannot be certain that Muhammad said these things because the sources on them are late so for me it would come down to do you have separate good reasons to think that he was a true prophet because if you did then i would have a reason then i would have a then i would have a separate reason to favor one interpretation over the other um so it's basically in the absence of evidence to to believe that he's a prophet he's just a regular he's just a regular guy to me or or a false prophet um and therefore it i mean if you just if you if you look at it 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 really makes sense that he made false prophecies and that other people modified them later. That makes, that makes sense. Uh, you could, you could, you could argue for that. It was actually the reverse, but I, I just wouldn't do that without reason to, uh, without a good reason to think that he was accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I think, um, there is actually, I'm, I'm so focused on what people say in the chat. Uh, I'm so distracted right now. Uh, <laughs> wait, I wanted to add something. 
I wanted to add something. I forgot. I forgot. The chat is distracted. During the whole conversation, people in the chat were talking about uh, a piano in uh, Sheikh Farouk's background, and everyone is focused on the piano. And I think, wow, what a grand thing to focus on during such a discussion. <laughs> but, but yeah, people. People always do that. I, I like. I'll be making like like. Hey, this is the best video I've ever made. And people are like, Hey, what what what's up with the action figure in the back? It's like, what? <laughs> that's what you're looking at. That's that's. <laughs> Seriously, but his background as well was actually a picture. It wasn't his real background, so uh, that explains why there was a piano. Um, there was something I wanted to say in response to all of this, but anyway, no, I'll read you, a few you should no, you shouldn't be responding to someone after he's gone. I will. I was. I destroyed him. I humiliated him. We, 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 we can answer super chats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Saint Mal said, "Interesting show. I got some steaks to put on the grill. Intelligent conversation. Thank you. I really. I. I personally also found it very, very insightful and wholesome and refreshing. Even David Wood thought so. You know. Even he. Yeah. Uh, but thanks, Saint Miles." Uh, Omar Z. Prov said, how about, uh, Proverbs said, how about this contradiction, Dr. Wood, 26, 34 to 36, and 7, 109, was it Pharaoh or the priest? We pretty much talked about this a few streams ago, but um, is, are there any, in one sentence, maximum four words, is there anything you want is, to say about is, that? Is he wanting me to defend that this is a contradiction or to say that it's not a contradiction or what? I don't know. I don't know, but that was already... There are no contradictions thing. in the perfect Quran. What's wrong with you, Omar? Your name's Omar? Yeah. You're named after the, the second rightly guided caliph? What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. Have some respect. Uh, John just said, thanks, AP, for letting for we speak. I I marked a lot of non-super chats again just because I want to. Kenneth Sapak said, how much study about the Hadith is required? About this specific Hadith, which one are we talking about? The the child before he grows up, the world would end, or the... <coughs> I would say um, I spent a few hours, honestly, looking into the whole... Um, before this boy grows very old, the hour would be established. And an hour just because, I mean, I, I brought up this earlier. I put it on the screen. This is like a very rough outline of um, these narrations, like of this hadith where Muhammad says, uh, before this boy grows very old, the hour would be established, or the hour would not be established before this boy grows very old. There are three different variations of this hadith. One In one, he says, the hour. In one other, he also says the hour, but the narration is slightly different. And in the third variation, he says your hour. And so I broke these down into who narrated them, where these come from, and who they go back to, and then analyzed um, the credibility of each one of these according to the Islamic scholars and so on. If you want to go into all of these details and the text and the wording and all of that, it might take, I don't know, an hour or two. Uh, but this is, of course, not the only thing that you would have to take into consideration if you want to analyze this hadith. For example, you also have to go to different narrations um, which may support or contradict this hadith and so on. So it's a complicated topic. Uh, Ellie Shamoon said, hello, everyone. Thank you. Hey, yeah, Ellie. Hello. I know Ellie. You know Ellie? Who's Ellie? He's uh, he's this cool dude. Um, he he he's uh, he uh, he he goes to conferences and uh, he's super cool because he always pays for everything. Oh, like it'll be crazy. There'll be a group of like twenty people and we all go out and then we find out someone someone paid for everyone, <laughs> someone paid for everyone's meal. But it's, it would be this guy. That's fun. That's fun. yeah. You should come. You should come hang out with us, Ellie. Do it. <laughs> hang out with me Do and it. AP. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I want to praise myself here quickly. I changed the background of this live stream from a bunch of stay away from Islams into just some regular fantasy or uh, earth thing, just because I didn't want to be too uh, outright disrespectful to our uh, guests. Uh, so that's how humbly good I am. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kenneth Sapak said, uh, what good comes from studying Islam all your life? Are you kidding me? A lot of good stuff comes because Allah loves you. You might believe peace in and tolerance. Truth. Yeah. yeah. U yeah. Universal peace and tolerance. Definitely. Definitely. Anthony Smith said, AP, do you like Jews? What kind of a question is this? Why did I mark this? Uh, yeah, I, Cause I do. Cause you grew up around Nazis in Germany. Yeah. No, I love Jews actually. I love Jews. Uh, 
is my they they are my best friends and employers by the way john harris said apostate prophet you are the man thank you i just marked a bunch of things that praise me here yeah that's what he uh, does he goes through them up that's negative <laughs> up that says i'm wrong that says i'm wrong that says i'm wrong this one says i'm great let me save yeah. that one and read yeah. it solon Elias said AP, ap is allowed to marry only one wife yeah uh we love you apostate prophet yeah D. Bordeaux said, uh, Bordeaux said, what does the Farouz think about MBS tossing out hadiths? He really did have only a very limited time. He said he would only be here for an yep. hour, so we weren't able yeah, to. So he, much yeah, he actually, stayed, he actually stayed longer than he said he could, so that's cool. Yeah, but um, but about MBS, the Saudi prince, yeah, apparently, uh, tossing yeah, out hadiths, uh, I don't know. We have to get everyone's opinion on that. Mm -hmm. But apparently he's really, he's uh doing quite a few changes which the islamists are are not liking very much in saudi arabia and kind of kind of uh uh turning saudi arabia into a more fun place but there's not much that that you can really do there because it's it's in the end saudi arabia yeah. uh es 1002 said one of the lesser signs of the hour is hadith rejecting uh, that that that's actually there are hadith, there are hadiths like that uh, about is... about about people uh, about knowledge disappearing and yeah. I, I mean it it's 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 weird because there are some hadiths which make it sound like Islam dominates the world Islam Islam ends up controlling everything there are other hadiths where it makes it sound like Islam is completely wiped out and there is no Islam um, like like there there are hadiths which say that uh that that by the time the end comes there there wouldn't be one person on in left in the world calling out for Allah and so it, it makes it sound like everyone has has become an apostate um, by then matter of fact hey we should start using those saying hey you Muslims if you want the end to come everyone has to leave Islam <laughs> because the yeah. end won't come that would be a funny video AP it's like yeah. if you if you if you want Islam to be true everyone has to leave Islam Please help us fulfill Muhammad's prophethood prophecy and leave Islam with us today. <laughs> uh, dude, dude, if you did that like a two minute, <laughs> a two minute, a two minute commercial, help us fulfill, <laughs> help us fulfill this prophecy of Muhammad. <laughs> uh, Victor said about Sheikh Farouz, he ain't got nothing on Sheikh Yabudi. And nobody yeah, I, can, nobody is a match for Sheikh Yabudi. Absolutely. And New Atheist made a super sticker, which looks like something here that I cannot see at the moment, but I'm sure it looks uh, fantastic, man. Uh, but thank you all so much for viewing. Thank you all so much for watching. And uh, David, anything else that you want to add before we uh, come to the final advice? Uh, nope. Uh, if everything goes okay, we'll be back tomorrow oh yeah 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 for, for another discussion with Sheikh Farouz yeah yeah we will actually um I pointed it out earlier but we will be having another conversation with Farouz tomorrow on David Wood's channel which I will link in the description did you already create that stream so I can link uh it? no but I'll I'll probably do it now and then okay. I'll send it to you okay lazy lazy uh <laughs> I'm sorry but, yeah I will I will link his uh channel and also the link as soon as it is available in, in the description so that you can join us again for another conversation tomorrow but this was very wholesome and again I say it every Muslim apologist and scholar out there even those who have said horrible things to me in the past please come and join us in a conversation let's have this conversation and let's let people judge what they think is and is not uh, right. And with that said, thanks everyone for viewing. We will be back quite soon. Uh, Sarah Rainey said, nice stream. Momologic said, thank you both for sharing. Arnie Nero said, I challenge Apostate Prophet to debate something. But thanks everyone. St. Miles, bye. Thank you. Have a fantastic day, everybody, and stay away from Islam.